Hello everyone, welcome to part two of my Halloween extravaganza. Today I'm going to be reading The Barber of Sybil, a tale from Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids by Jamie Ricks. Here we go. You will probably have heard of a town called Saucy My Sea. The children who lived in the town had a terrible reputation. They were the rudest children in the world. Parents were often be seen crying in the streets as their sons and daughters shouted abuse at them. It was an appalling sight that made visitors to the town shudder with horror, and nobody knew what to do about it. One day, a new shop appeared in the high street. The sign outside said Barber, then in small letters underneath, Children, a speciality. The window was permanently steamed off so that nobody could see in from the street. The old drops of water ran down a neat handwritten sign hanging on the door. Free cuts, short back and sides, pudding basin, or the full chop. The barber was a cheery looking man with a handlebar moustache and bright red cheeks. He visited the local schools and offered free haircuts to all the children. He very quickly became popular. It was even cut not because he was a particularly good barber. In fact, many of the parents had noticed their children's hair was exactly the same length. It came out as it was when they came went in. But because the fortune of Saucy by Sea miraculously changed, whenever they visited the shop, they were going to go in cheeky and rude. And come out as polite as could be. As polite could be. However, there were three things about the new barber that people considered strange. Firstly, he never allowed adults into his shop. Children had to go in alone. Secondly, he had a very nasty collection of grey slugs, which he kept in a large glassical jar by the cash table. But seeing as he provided such an excellent service, the parents of Saucy Spicy were happy to allow him these two eccentricities. A new family moved into the town. The two children. Tanya and Peregrine started at the local school in the autumn, and it soon became clear they were not fitting in. Can anyone tell me what two and two is? said Peregrine's math teacher. Two, two, said Peregrine's. Yeah, said Peregrine, without putting his hand up. It's what a ballerina wears, isn't it? A two, two. Put your hand up when you have something sensible to say. Teacher, it's Peregrine, said the teacher. Peregrine put his hand up. I'm not saying these. I'm not saying this. There was a gasp from the class. Nobody would dare be so cheeky to a teacher. Peregrine sat back in his chair and grinned. The teacher was bright red. It was all she could do to control her fury. Go and see the headmaster, she said slowly. Now, Tanya, meanwhile, was doing gym. Chuck your skull into your nickies yourself, she shouted at the gym's teacher. Gym teacher, I'm not doing it. Tanya, I'm not going to argue with you. Everyone does gym in their knickers. Not me, said Tanya. I've got a note for my mother. Let me see it then, said the gym teacher. All right, said Tanya defiantly. Don't you don't on top of a bench, opened her mouth and sang in her loudest voice. <laughs> there was a sudden silence from the rest of the class. Tanya jumped down from the bench. It's a musical note. My mom's always singing. The gym teacher took a deep breath. 
Go and see the headmaster, she said slowly. Now! Tell the headmaster was an old man who had been in the teaching business all his life. He knew exactly how to deal with cheeky children. They didn't have inside his office for a while until they were really scared. They called him with a voice like thunder, 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 thunder lightning, thunder, thunder. Standing him in front of his desk while he faced the window, flexing a long bamboo cane in his hands and throwing it confront the offenders. Crowded the cane down on the desk in front of them and roared, Well, what do you have to go to say for yourself? It always worked. The children were always deeply ashamed about their behavior and always said, Sorry. Tiny and Barrigan had been waiting in the corridor for about ten minutes when the headmaster called him in. He was always, he was standing by the window playing with the large stick. Then he stood by his desk waiting for him to say something. And suddenly he turned round and thumped a stick down on the desk in front of them. Well, boomed the headmaster, what have you got to say for yourself? Tanya and Peregrine looked at each other and shrugged their shoulders. Then they started singing. We're not scared of your stupid old stick. If you really want to know, you make us sick. Because you look like a hammer with a hairy... You're an idiot, you're a twit, you're a great fat lump. There was a dull thud as the headmaster collapsed behind his desk. Tanya and Peregrine waited. A hand appeared above the telephone. Then a white face. Could you g -g -g get matron, please? Murmured the headmaster through in the song. And obviously, in a big shock. Then g -g -g kindly leave my office. The next day was Friday. Friday was the day that the barber came to the school to find new customers. The first class he visited was Peregrine. Good morning, class, said the barber. Good morning, sir, replied everyone except Peregrine. The barber put on his spectacles and stared at him. Don't you want to say good morning to me, said the barber. No, said Peregrine rudely. I'd rather say goodbye. The barber chuckled. You look like you need a haircut, young man. Come and see me tomorrow morning. I need to get a pencil and wrote short back and sides in a little black book. The barber entered Tanya's class just as she was flicking ink pads at the teacher, who had her back turned and was writing French words on the blackboard. The class stood up when they saw the barber come in. Tanya went one further. She stood on top of her desk, stung her tongue at, out, and wiggled all her fingers in his ears. The barber took out his little black book. And what did your, your name be? She said to Tanya. It might be to clean a bit of it the first or Ms. Anna, but it isn't, she replied. It's Tanya Windsor, said the teacher. The barber wrote her name down. Tanya, she said, I think you need a haircut as well. Come to my show tomorrow morning with Terrigan. I'll see what I can do for you. The next, the following morning, Tanya turned up at the barber's off shop for their haircuts. A bell rang in the distance and they pushed open the door. They were in a small room with shiny red lino on the floor. In the middle, stood a large black and chrome dentist chair underneath a bright overhead light. A bag of steel instruments sat on a shelf to the left of it. the chair and a black cat lay asleep. <sighs> Even next to it. Strangely, there were no mirrors. Perhaps the barber didn't want his customers to see what he was doing. He's not here, said Tanya. He's forgotten all, of, he's forgotten we're coming. 
Kogan sidled sidled up to the castle. Look at these, he shouted, lifting the barber's collection of grey slugs down the cone. Imagine putting one of these in your mouth, squealed Tanya. Oh no, Perrigan, no, don't! Perrigan had unscrewed the lid of the jaw, fished out a slug, and pret is pretending to eat it. I'm sick! So will he, said a voice from the back of the shop. Perrigan got such a fright that he swallowed the slug he was playing with. Goop. And dropped the jaw on the floor. The glass smashed and a heavy twisting ball of slimy gray slugs spilled out onto the floor. As they slivered around Tanya's feet, she heard a hundred different voices shout out. Charles, we'll do it. Don't get it. I hate you too. Get him off me. She shrieked. The barber bent down, scooped at the shattering slugs and squeezed them into his pockets. You shouldn't play with other people's property, said. Well, you shouldn't leave them where I can reach them, replied Peregrine treakily. You think you're real clever, don't you, said the bob. Well, you're certainly not, said Peregrine. Otherwise, your best friends wouldn't be slugs. The barber laughed. Those aren't slugs. Yes, they are, said Tanya, aren't they? The barber said nothing. Well, uh, they're not slugs. What are they then? The barber simply smiled and locked the door. No, he won't be disturbed, he said. He tied a small plastic bib around each one of their necks and went over to his tool bag. Peregrine and Tanya watched him closely as he took out a silver razor. He ran his tongue down the edge of the blade to see, test how sharp it was. A thin red line of blood appeared on his tongue, which he promptly swallowed. The children were within a little frightened. Nobody had ever cut their hair with a razor blade before. Who wants to be first? He asked, taking out his little black book. Peregrine, with your short back and size, or Tanya, I have you done for the full chop. But I don't want all my hair chopped off, she said. We'll start with Peregrine then. Up you come. The barber helped Peregrine into the little... Black and chrome dentist chair. He pressed the lever and the chair flattened out so that Peregrine was lying on his back, looking up into the overhead light. The barber tied two lever stripes around Peregrine's wrist. Now, open wide, she said. Tiny screamed, Stop! You're not a dentist! Why should he open his mouth? You cut people's hair! Whatever gave you that idea? She laughed. I teach little children to keep a several tongue in their head. What do you cut then? said Tanya nervously. I'll give you one guess, said the barber. <laughs> tongue of a hell. Perrin gasped. So, there's all slugs in your pocket? No, of course not, shouted the barber. They're children's tongues. The little bits of children's tongues that make you all so foul out. I snip out the rudeness. I trim over the cheekiness. I cut away the bad language. And when I finish, I rinse your mouths out with soap and water. Ah, slip! Ah, slip! When Tanya went back to school on Monday, American went back to school on Monday, they were different children. Their tongues were shorter for one. Also, they didn't swear. They weren't cheeky, and they didn't try to be clever and fun of the rest of the class. In fact, they were two of the politest children in a school with a growing reputation for being the politest school in the world. The barber left Saucy by Sea that week and was never seen again. He went over in search of other children in other towns. So if another, a new barber arrives at your school and his pockets are bulging with slugs, I suggest you, you keep your mouth firmly shut. And only speak when you're spoken to. Part. I'll see you at part three. Like, sub, click bell of my Halloween extravaganza. Bye!